What do you do, you guys? It is your boy, Leon Mookie here, back with you with another new part of What If Izuku Can Summon Heroic Spirits. This is part 21. And in the last part, I went over on that of the setup for several plot points for several things that are going to be happening as this what if continues, such as Lady Nagant being intercepted by both that of Kotaro and the Queen of Sheba to explain the situation to her that the person that she, that she has a contract killing is an innocent boy who just wants to help and help people, but the HBSC doesn't want that as they just wanted to use him as a tool, just like her. With knowing this now, she is willing to be that of a double agent for them, unlike Cox, who is blackmailed, but is slowly realizing that maybe he needs to actually work with that of Izuku and his servants too. Plus, Izuku also had a plan for that of Nightingale to heal that of Ingenium, or, Ten or should I say Tensei Ida, Ida's older brother, the former Ingenium, by using her noble phantasm to heal what wounds that they, that the doctors couldn't, well, heal after all. However, not only that, Izuku's servants are planning to wanting to find ways to dismantle the HPSC. Even though Izuku is letting bygones be bygones, even though there are many times that they have tried to attack him, blackmail him, and tried to manipulate him to join them. His servants, on the other hand, want to make sure that this government branch basically knows their place. By hoping that Izuku's next summon, next heroic spirit summon, will be a Mooncaster servant. However, they're a little worried that they may, that the Mooncaster, depending on who it is, may be problematic. Either them being too well unhinged, not willing to cooperate, too damn lazy, or all the above. But who could say? But them. However, Classes start back up for that of UA. Izuku worried about Ida and wondering how he's feeling, even though he knows that his brother is most definitely now okay, but still can't help but worry about his friend. However, Nightingale found something out at the hospital that somebody is looking up Izuku's medical records as well on his family ancestry. However, she's keeping that to herself, at least for the time being. And as for Class 1A still living up their fame high from the sports festival, Aizawa brings up a crucial fact that they all need to worry about now to create their hero names. So, with all that said, let's get into this, shall we guys? Outside of UA, currently, as some a figure, a lone figure is actually walking to the prestigious UA school. As currently, the person walking to the school is quite well eye-catching from both that of the civilians and pro heroes alike actually with many of them can't help but stare at them within however they're actually on the phone within the voice sounding quite feminine from the lady saying don't worry iris i got this with then the person on the phone as it's quite a familiar other female as it as it sounds like the Tosaka girl, as her first name being Iris, saying, seriously, Sakura, this is important. This, is not, this isn't just coming from me. This is coming from the director of the Clock Tower and also the Maids Association. I, just because you're a pro hero saying, yeah, yeah, I get that. I get that. This is important. Our main job is to make sure if he's capable of handling himself and to see if he's a threat to the world as well. But I also want to find out about his servants as well. With then hearing that vo that word of longing with then soon, Iris saying, ah, I know Sakura, you want to know if he's one of his servants, don't you? With then soon, the woman stopped. Now getting that of a better figure of her, she seems to have that of a long, have wearing that of a red coat with that that almost looks a mixture of that of a coat and a shrine maiden's uniform however under the coat being that of a tight black well tank top 
that kind of shows quite a, that basically leaves little to the imagination besides that of a, well, cleavage window. Same also goes with that. It She also wearing that of tight, tight black, well, pants that have that of straps around that of her thighs. However, leaving that of me, that of her, well, thought, the remaining of her legs, mainly that of her calves, open actually. However, she's wearing that of cut of boots with that with that of embroidery with that of silver embroidery around it. Within, still on the phone, saying, "I just need to know. We didn't see almost all of his servants. We only saw something that seemed like that of a writer class, one that seemed that of assassin class, and." One that seemed close to that of a phys that uses physical strength and power, possibly, possibly maybe that of a saber, po maybe, but by the look of it, po it seemed more modern, but still, but didn't use any other weapon besides their fists, possibly a berserker. We haven't seen his saber, his lancer, his caster, and his archer. With then, Ilya saying, ah, just. Don't have your hopes up, okay, if he didn't summon him. That's all. With then, she's saying, don't worry, cousin. I won't. With that, soon she hangs up. With that, getting that of a better look at her face, as she seems to be that of her early to mid-twenties, actually. As she has that of b pale white hair, actually. With then, she finally arrived at UA. But soon, realizing, ah, hope this badge works. I did, I did make a message to that of Nezu saying that I wanted to meet with him after all. With that, she walks through that gate with the infamous UA barrier not even activating, saying, hmm, guess it did work. And she couldn't help but smile with, back with that of Class 1A. Like just like before, everybody is still excited that they're finally going to make their hero names. However, Aizawa activating his quirk as his red eyes begin to glow, with a bit of his hair also standing up for a second as everybody soon shuts up. Within that, Aizawa can help its eyes saying, Now, just to let you know, hero names are normally hero names are basically a formality. You can basically do whatever you wish. However, as time went on, hero names now become that of an importance because it's more symbolized on what the kind of hero you are and what you're going to be. As he says this, he, rem he remembers on when he basically struggled to even get his hero name out there during that of his first year in UA until he basically listened to what Mike said early on, calling him that of Eraserhead. But then, Aizawa just basically just took it and thought he could change it as time went on. But unfortunately, let's just say the name stuck after a certain incident during his second year. So there's no way to change it. Not like he would want to anyway. After coming out of his thoughts, soon a certain someone basically opening that of the door to Class 1A. As they said, you'll have hell to pay with then soon a few students couldn't help but be excited while some couldn't help but blush in that of other things as per as the person walking in being midnight as she'll be the one basically making sure that their names are approved and you and safe to be used for the public after all with that it makes everyone even more excited with then secret saying huh so they choose their names. This is quite interesting. With then soon, Scott Hatch actually can help but speak saying, indeed, most people, it's normally the people who, who make the names for their heroes after all, especially for us from the past. With then soon, Scott Izuku realizing the conversation from them saying, that's right. As remembering at least for that of uh, four of his own servants, for example, for Sigurd, he was known as the Dragon Slayer just for killing Nat of the Black Dragon Falfnir, after all. Also known as the Descendant of Odin and the Demon Swordsman due to him wearing, wielding Nat of Grand, after all. Skyhatch is literally called that of the Queen of Shadows or that of the Lord 
or the Lord of Shadows after to due to her being in charge in charge of that of the Irish land of the dead after all. She was also given one of the titles of hero trainers given as she taught quite a bit of heroes during her time. Odysseus was also given the name of the Trojan hero and also Athena's champion because she was because he was blessed by Athena herself given that she basically fell in love with him if I recall. And last but not least Nobu literally known as one of the most progressive but also one of the most despised warlords in daimyos during that of the Warring States period. Otherwise, the Devil King or the Demon King of the Sixth Heaven. Any of those names basically, basically fits her, as people like to call her because of the things she's done, all in the name of victory and progress. So it's always the people giving them their names. So me choosing my name for myself, that's with soon creating that of a link with that of izuku nobu speaking saying go with the name that you choose the most go with the name that you feel like fits with hey hey didn't you always make quite a bit of names within kotaro actually commenting saying oh right i remember i remember you choosing the names such as all my all my boy all my junior mighty man super all might with then Izuku having that a full on face of embarrassment as his face is completely and utterly red saying, please stop, Kotaro, just thinking about that embarrasses the hell out of me. And you're repeating each and every one that you remember so easily. With each one of them couldn't help but actually laugh. Before then soon, Sigurd actually commented saying, oh right, I remember you even said, when you, you also had a name called the spectacular, amazing, almighty, with then saying, stop, with slamming his head to that of the table, before then giving that as soon, Bakugo drops that of a whiteboard and marker on Izuku's head, but then Bakugo couldn't help but scoff in that of, we that of weirdness and also annoyance at that of Izuku, wondering what the hell is with him. As time went on in that of Class 1A, each and every one of them choose the exact same hero names as they choose when during canon after all. So, no real changes. Even, even Bakugo is still the same, but however, instead of choosing the name Lord of King first, he chooses the name Lord first. Because again, he basically lost the sports to him. His eyes of choosing Lord basically means he's second best, as much as he hates to admit it. However, Lord Explosion Murder still didn't fit because again, he choose, he puts the damn name Murder in it. All that's left is that of Izuku and that of Ida as well. With Ida was a plan, just like in canon, was planning to choose the name Ingenium. However, feeling unworthy of the name until he gets his vengeance for his brother, he soon just chooses his first name, just like that of Shoto after all. All that's left is Izuku and Bakugo basically rechanging his name, after, to be honest. But then Izuku coming to the realization, maybe he should choose, as he was about to choose the name Deku, the same since, since that of Ochako changed the name from that of Useless to that you can do it, and that it can be the name of a hero after all. However, what then soon... Sheba saying, I wouldn't use that name, Izuku. But then, soon, she sent Izuku creating that of a link with her again, saying, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't I? Saying, as much as I know that you want to change that name to something that used to be something down tried to you. And Uraraka did make it some, didn't make it seem more friendly and more loving as well. But in this day of society, a name is everything. Even if you change the name from something that se that sounds negative into something positive, the original meaning behind that name will always remain. You should choose a name that represents you, not what a name that not not a name from the past that didn't that basically put you down all the time. With then soon, Izuku began to real began to think and also began to realize that Sheba's right that he shouldn't rely on that of a name from his past 
and change it to some change it to something more to at least try to put a more positive spin on it but a name that represents him that represents what he stands for not what other people would stand for with then soon wiping that off before coming to the realization what he stands for is what his servants stand for historical figures good and evil in the modern age helping him out achieve his goal to become a hero all their deeds their actions their their feats all all recorded in the throne of heroes the throne of heroes connected to the akashic records with then izuku finally coming to that rip finally coming to a really great realization as then he finally stands up and heading to that of the podium showing his name with then suit everybody couldn't help but be shocked and surprised wondering what the name even meant but then kirishima saying hey midoriya what's your hero name supposed to mean with then suit Sa- sato speaking up saying yeah dude i never heard of a name like that before with then Izuku can help but sm- smile down saying well it's a name i feel like i wanted to make a name that basically symbolizes my growth shows about everything that i've gone through to learn and develop to get this far especially certain people who helped me get this far as well so in the honor of them i want to use this name even though they have been forgotten by by that of the times of the past their legacy and deeds will always be remembered through their actions so this this has to be my name within showing as now finally seeing the name all written in japanese saying the guiding hero akashic but then after saying that name a few people couldn't help but still be confused while some couldn't help but actually be excited and happy for izuku what well, except one girl who's happy but also at the same time trying to get trying to understand as is being momo once again saying akashic like the like the ancient akashic records the supposed well hypothetical and indimensional book that's supposed to record everything of human history that akashic is he still tr- his quirks still he still names each and every one of his sentient quirks after historical figures could that be the reason why he chose the name akashic hmm so i still need to know more my aunt each and every one of my questions for you midoriya continue to pile up more and more just what are you really with then Mo- momo still wondering more about her gr- her messy spiky haired green net classmates with then bakugo still the last one saying king explosion murder with then soon midnight just basically drops her hands down saying ah no again with bakio blowing up again saying how does this not work with then soon me but then nobunaga appearing in out of her casual clothes with then shouting out it's because you put murder in your name dumbass keep the damn king and just keep the damn king in an explosion and that will be great just remove the murder idiot after saying her piece and returning back into that spirit form with then izuku couldn't help but actually ha- look at that of his archer class servant saying no but why looking straight at bakugo with then sued bakugo having that of a look of pure utter adulterated murder murder on his face saying what did you say deku as he was about to basically lunge at izuku However, soon captured by that of Aizawa and also gra- and also knocked out by Midnight in her quirk in her quirk after all. Within soon, Aizawa saying, Midoriya saying, that wasn't my fault. I wasn't trying to. With then saying, figures. Just keep a better control over your quirk, would you? As for the rest of you, I'm going to take out 
I'm going to take Bakugo back to the infirmary and also give him at least that of a di that of at least that of an hour of detention at when school ends. As for the rest of you, you all need to choose an agency of what you're going to be needing to do. Don't you don't don't worry. You don't need a rush. You'll have at least out of three days to choose on who you want for your agency. Just make sure you choose those from the top pick. If any one of them, if any of them actually accepts you, then you can choose the one that, then you can basically choose the one that you actually want the most. So make sure to choose one that actually fits you after all. With that, soon after dragging out that of a unconscious spiky Pomeranian blonde, Pomeranian out of the classroom with then midnight stretching herself saying I'll see you all when cla when classes fully start with then midnight also leaving the classroom as well as then Izuku begins to go through that of his list wondering on who he should choose as the first person on his list that he thinks about choosing sh could be that of Yari Musha with then soon Sigurd alongside that of Scott Hatch begin to materialize right beside that of Izuku. But then, Scott Sigurd saying, Yari Musha. If I recall, he's currently the number eight pro at this time. With then, soon, Scott saying, he also has a quirk that allows him to master any form of weapon that he has. He seems to be a pretty good teacher for you if you intern with him. With then, Izuku saying, that's what I thought too. That's why I'm putting him on the top of the list. However, I do want to check out other, well, p people as well. I'm thinking about also going with that of Ed Shot. Kotaro did say I really need to work on my stealth abilities, after all. But then, Kotaro saying, you do. You really, really need to, Izuku. You can't always just rush into that of a fight. Sometimes you need to be stealthy as well. But then, Izuku saying, right, right, I got it. However, there are also other types of pros that can help me as well improve besides just the top 10. So I just need to keep continue looking over my list. But those two will be my first and second options. As Izuku begins going over to his list with then soon both Ochako, Momo, Jiro, alongside that of Ojiro and Shoto actually go over to Izuku as well. Seeing the offers that he plans on choosing while also asking them about their offers, which everything still goes the same as it would have in canon. With Ochako choosing Gunhead to learn his martial arts after all, Momo still choosing a Uwabani, given that he she did get an offer from her, to be honest, and she is a quite popular hero. As Izuku wanted to bring the fact that Uwabani possibly only chose her due to her looks, given that she may be a she may be a popular hero and a pretty good rescue hero, but then again, her commercials and her fashion career is what she's truly popular for. With Jiro basically saying that she's gonna go with Death Arms. Given that he is, he's also a pro hero that works here in the city, works here in that of the city as well, and also here in town. And given that it's also near, his agency is pretty close to her house, it would, it would be pretty stupid for her not to go with him. Plus, she really needs to work on her cardio and probably needs to get at least a little bit more muscle, which she keep, she keeps that to herself. With then soon Izuku asking Shoto what agency he's going with. With then him saying, I'm going with my father's agency. With that, everybody else seemed, well, not surprised because again, his father, Endeavor, number two hero, However, for Izuku, on the other hand, and not just him, but also Kotaro were shocked. But then Kotaro also getting out of his spirit form, walking over to, to Shoto and saying, are you sure? With then looking at the eye, looking at the eyes of Kotaro, even behind his bangs, he could even see that of the worry. But then saying, I'm sure I can do, if it, he may be, well, my father, but he didn't become the number two hero for this long for nothing after all. So yeah, I need to do, I need to choose his agency. With then soon, Izuku and Kotaro look at each other, but then Izuku nodding saying, all right, if you say so, Todoroki. 
as classes were getting closer and closer to that of beginning while also fully going through that of their offers. As classes finally come to an end with even with Bakugo basically grumbling with, Kir- with Kirishima by his side, given that he is annoyed that he has to serve detention, with Kirishima trying to console him, saying that he'll wait, he'll wait by he'll wait by his side after all. With Bakugo getting annoyed, saying, "I don't need you by my side, shitty hair." With everybody can help but also giggle at the reaction between the two. With even Izuku actually couldn't help but laugh. With soon, shit. Nobu saying, what's with you, Izuku? You seem a lot more happier for that guy. Saying, huh? Oh, talking about Kachan? Yeah. I don't know why, but I think after the sports festival, he seems a lot more controlled, if I had to say. Still, e- still, well, egotistical as always, and full of himself too, and even ain't still pretty damn angry for no damn reason. But... He seems a lot more, I don't know, approachable now. I guess that's just me within Sigurd saying, no, it's not Izuku. With then Sigurd saying, you've known Bakugo longer than any of us. Even if we have your memories and understand what you've gone through, we cannot sympathize with them as w- even though we cannot sympathize how you feel. We can understand how you feel though. You see him went from that of an egotistical, arrogant, self-entitled little brat who believed that the world revolved around him. Now, when you finally defeated him in the sports festival, you humbled him, finally seeing that he is not truly the, the top dog as he believed he was. Now he realized that he needs to work harder, train harder, and stop pushing those around him away. As much as he wants to, he's being a lot more less, well aggressive about it though if you've noticed with then he's saying yeah yeah i have with that soon as izuku was about was about to leave the classroom but then soon opening the door he notices that a certain pro hero stands in front of him saying here i am in an awkward position as a hero as it being all might but then izuku's eyes wide saying all might what are you aha young midoriya Good that I was able to catch you. There's something I wish to tell you. However, the principal wishes to see you first. With then soon, Izuk saying, wait, the principal? And you want to talk to me? He's saying, like I said, I'll talk to you after the principal sees you. I don't like to keep him waiting since he is a busy and scary man. What? But not as scary as that man. The best I hold this off, the more user I can actually control myself. With then, Izuku feels like he hurt. He feels like he should have heard something saying, uh, All Might, did you say something? Saying, uh, nothing, nothing at all. Come now, my boy, let's go. Let's get you to the principal's office. Grabbing Izuku, with then, soon everybody else in class 1A can't help but be completely and utterly confused on what the hell just happened. With then, in that of at least one minute, they were able to make it to the principal's office. The what as the wide, well, wooden doors basically right in front of them saying, I'll be waiting outside here. It isn't my place to basically, well, listen to certain meetings after all. Saying, who's here to see me? Like I said, you should see for yourself. They're actually somebody here who offered you that of an internship, but wanted to speak to you in person though. With that, soon. Izuku actually couldn't help but be somewhat shocked and surprised that one of his offers decided to come to UA to speak with him. But then soon, knocking the door, Nezu saying, please come in, Midoriya. With then opening the door, seeing that of the rodent chimera principal over his desk. However, another somebody also sitting in that of a couch and between that of two tables Oh, drinking that of a cup of tea as she being the same young woman named Sakura from this er- from earlier. But then soon Izuku's eyes whining saying, wait, you're, you're, you're. But then saying, pleasant to meet you, Midoriya. You might know on who I am. With then saying, of course I know who you are. You're, 
your Lady Archer, the number 11th pro hero in Japan. Within knowing Sakura's hero name, being Lady Archer, so you do know who I am. That's pretty, that's not so bad after all. I've gotten pretty, I've basically held the spot in, in the ranking for top 10 for so long that it never changes that much. Always behind that of Gangorka, Ryukyu, or that of Yorimusha. Always those three, never able to reach the top 10 spots entirely. With then, soon, is it saying, I figured that you were one of the pros one of my options, but I didn't think you would come to see me in person. With then, soon, Nez is saying, she has an offer for you. And then the internship offer, something she wanted to explain herself. Normally, we don't, normally when it comes to those who offered in internships to our students, we don't allow certain, however, she has a special case here though. So I have, so unfortunately, even for somebody like me, I have to let her speak to you. Within suit, Izuku eyes wide and saying, you have to, huh? Within thinking, is, this, is she working with the HPSC as well? Within saying, <laughs> oh, Nezu, Nezu, Nezu. You know better than that. This isn't, I wasn't, I wouldn't use that authority if I didn't have to, because this is really important after all. With then soon, Nezu can help but sigh, saying, of course, of course. When it comes to you mages, it can be quite overwhelming even for somebody like me. With then soon, Izuku's eyes wide in shock, saying, mages? Wait, so she isn't with the HPSC? With then soon, Nezu leaving the door, as then, as soon as he does, all of Izuku's servants, except that of, well, Sheba, as she's with that of Izuku's mom right now, all in their default combat attire, ready, already re preparing their weapons. With then, Tsud, Izuku also sh su shocked and surprised, saying, What the? Guys, what are you? With then, Sigurd raising Grand up into near to that of Lady Archer, within saying, you, you're a, you are a mage. I can feel the magic circuits flowing through your body and the piranha points as well. With then soon, Scott Hatch, I mean her gay bowl get the ready, even that of Medusa also having her snakes hissing and that of frustration as she's the closest to, as she's basically the closest in front of Izuku making sure that nothing gets past her. Within, she's saying, give us one good reason that we shouldn't fillet you or end your life here and now, mage. Within, Sue, finished drinking her tea, saying, because I'm here because I'm wanting to know about humanity's last master and what he's truly capable of. And seeing all your servants, it seems like you don't have him. <sighs> what a shame. Within hearing that title, with then soon Nightingale saying, you know, you know about the title of humanity's last master, disposed on those who are chosen by either that of Gaia or Alaya. Yes, after all, we may, the Holy Grail Wars are may, may be illegal in this world, and the Mage Association makes sure that another Holy Grail never appears. When it comes to the concept of pro heroes and villains, when, it, when bringing up that of magic craft and that of the supernatural, it would be complicated when everything revolves around quirks nowadays. So the Mage Association, allowing that of the branches of the, ma branches of the Mage Association to allow that of either two, two to that of five mages to become pro heroes using her magic craft as a, as a catalyst for quirks. I am one of them. With then, Izuku saying, so that's why you're here. You're from the mages, I never heard of the mage association. With then, she's saying, not surprising. We're more secretive than even that of many gov, than that of other shady government organizations. But we have more power than those governments as well. The only people that are aware of who we are are that of world leaders and certain political figures as well. 
not even the hypocrites that are that of the Hero Public Safety Commission know about us. And we have more power than even they do. But then Nobu saying, all right then, if that's the case, why are you really here? Are you really here for Izu and wanting to have him as an intern? As I have an intern for your agency, Miss Mage saying, like, oh, right, right. I should fully introduce myself besides just using my pro hero name. Lady Archer is my pro hero name, yes. I chose this name to honor that of my ancestor, after all, since he ends up being that of a heroic spirit. As for my real name, my name is Sakura Emiya, current head of the Emiya family. It's a pleasure to meet you within all of Izuku's spirit, heroic spirits actually couldn't help but be shocked and surprised with, with each and every one he, just hearing that last name, except Izuku saying, uh, you guys seem shocked. You know the last name with then soon Sky had saying it's a name well, well documented within the throne of heroes and the Akashic records. The name of M the Emia family within Sigurd saying once a low class mage family that barely that had barely any importance, they began to be basically a part of and well known throughout that of the match that of the mage community, either through that of Kiritsugu Emia, the mage killer, or Shiro Emia, winner of the fifth Holy Grail War, with then soon Gor. Medusa, speaking of saying, or as we know him truly, truly as heroic spirit counter guardian Shiro Emiya, with then Izuku's eyes widening in shock, hearing all of this, that one family that went from nothing began to be this influential and in that of the mate into that of history in the analogs of history, and now looking that one that a pro hero that he also admires is a descendant of that mage family, is, and they're also interested in him. As Izuku couldn't help but gulp and wondering, how is he going to get out of this or figure something out about, or wondering what's going to happen to him now? Outside of the principal's office, both All Might and Nezu are kind of curious, as Nezu is basically watching the entire interaction. However, it seems that the audio for the ca for that and the mic for the cameras in his office are completely and utterly out. Within him, can help but sigh, saying, "Ah, magic craft, such a headache." Within, All Might currently now in his small might form, saying, "Magic craft." As for, however, outside of UA, as Ida basically already turned his form in, already aware on the agency he plans on being with. That being the pro hero manual whose agency is in Hosu as Ida is aware that the hero killer is most definitely still in Hosu after all. Just where the same place on where he attacked his brother as, thi as this would be the start of his plan to get vengeance. But then soon he answer his phone begins to ring as it being from his mother saying Oh, hello, mother. I just left school, actually. I, but then she sang, Tanya, it's a miracle. It's, I can't believe that this has happened. But then soon, Ida couldn't help but be confused, saying, Mother, what are you? It's your brother Tensei. His legs. He can walk again. With that, I, Ida couldn't help but be utterly shocked, surprised, and utterly in disbelief, saying, Are you sure? Saying, I am. I am absolutely sure. Your turns out Tensei was able to move his legs this morning. He was still in quite a bit of pain, but it shows. But turns out the doctor said that he his that his spine, the area where he was pierced, completely healed overnight. It, it's never it's never been heard of after all. With that, Ida couldn't help but be utterly surprised as his mother saying. Tenya? Tenya, are you there? Tenya! With then, as for Ida, he couldn't help but have tears coming down his face, staining his glasses, saying, It's 
This can't be truly happening. My brother, my brother's okay. With then, soon, saying, how, just how? Ida stands in the pathway leading out of UA in that of disbelief and joy and, and sorrow, realizing that he was planning on doing that of a huge mistake for his brother. And that's it. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please tell me what you guys think in the comments below. Love to read them. And also, I will not, I will not lie to you guys. That last part with that of Ida and his family, I basically added that last minute, to be honest. That was completely unscripted, unlike the other parts. The reason I did that, I felt like it felt wrong not bringing that up in this part after all. And I didn't want to, and I didn't want to put you guys on that of a cliffhanger about how, even though we know that he's now healed thanks to Nightingale, we, I want you guys to know that he's con fully confirmed to be healed. Now for the more important stuff, yes, Izuku's name, Izuku's hero name is Akashic, because again, the throne of heroes, alongside all of the, all of the knowledge through that of the world, through that of the worlds created by Gaia, and through that of humanity, connected to that of Alaya. Is, connected, is still connected to that of the Akashic Records. The same Akashic Record that's also connected to that of the world of Tsunahime, of course. Basically, the entirety of the Nasuverse. Originally, I was thinking about making Izuku's hero name called Nasu, because, again, a nod to the Nasuverse, but that's too damn lazy. And I forget, not every... Not all Fate fans, especially you guys, are aware on the... Na on the where the true name of the Fate series is called the Nasuverse. So yeah. Anywho, Izuku's hero name is Akashic. All in the way to reference that he is connected to that of history and all the records connected to that because of his heroic spirits. And he's getting and he's now getting in contact with somebody from that of the Mage Association, being that of a descendant of Shiro Emiya and Sakura as well. I'll get into details about that later on as the as this series goes on. So yeah. Any rate, if you guys like this, please like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that bell notification key to date my videos when I upload on the channel. Also, please check out my Discord, my gaming channel, my side channel, my other channel, my Patreon, and my Cash App. All link in the description below. So, with all that said, this is Leo Muki signing out. Later guys, and hope you all take care. Take it away, Cheryl. All yours, my lady. Hi, everyone. This is White Fox. If you liked Leon's video, click the video on the left to see the most recent one. And if you want to see more of this, click the subscribe button and notification bell and check out his playlist. If you still haven't subscribed, do so in the center. With that said, I hope to see you again on my love's channel. Bye!